Hi guys, I am Shaft of the Clinic Casting Crew and we've got an amazing game for you guys today. On Prion Terraces, we've got France versus the Ukraine. I don't want to wait any longer. I don't think you do either, so let's get right into this game. Here in the top left hand side of Prion Terraces, representing Team My Insanity in the Red Brotoss Trunks, his nickname is the Drone Killer. Will he live up to the title in this game? We'll find out. It's Pit Drogo! And here in the bottom right hand side of that map, in the blue Zerg trunks, representing the Ukraine, it's none other than Bly. Now these are two nations that actually field great players. You've got um, Russia, or the Ukraine rather, um, probably not politically correct to get those confused, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, fielding players like Bly and White Raw and Damaga. Uh, and then you've got the French players like Pit Drogo, Marine Lord, uh, Stefano, can't forget Stefano, and uh, Little Bo. All really strong players. Um, 2015, definitely the year of the, the French. And we'll see, you know, if Pit Drogo is able to secure a victory in that legacy or if, you know, Bly is going to come out of this ahead. Now, this is a game from the DreamHack um, that just recently happened. Uh, so, you know, if you already know the results, don't spoil them for other people. But very very solid game i love this it actually opens up a little bit different for the zerg zerg really likes to do their three base before uh their pull in this case we see the fast gold in order to defend that super fast gold we've got the extractor and the pull and of course the protoss forced to also take a fast gold uh and this will allow the zerg to pressure this uh rather than just letting their protoss have it of course protoss could Arguably, it could be said that Protoss don't benefit as much off of a gold as Zerg. Zerg, of course, drones only cost minerals. And you can make as many drones as you have larva, which is, you know, pretty much, you know, like six, seven per uh, hatchery, where Protoss are always going to be limited to one per nexus per cycle. So, I mean, there's an argument to be made there, at the very least, that the Zerg benefits a little bit more from the gold, and of course, he's going to be able to flood Lings out like nobody's business. Zealots, not quite as good as Lings in raw numbers, and of course, Adepts, really solid units, but require gas, which of course, no extra benefit of being at that gold. So we'll see how this ends up playing out on Prion Terraces. Ghosting in here with... a. The Adept's going to go ahead and warp those, and looks like he's going to go straight in for the uh, Rhone line, and he's going to ghost right on up to the uh, second level, third level, uh, going right on into that main. Does he morph? Yes, he does. Really annoying unit. I love the design of the Adept. I'm not sure about the balance yet, but a very well you know, thought out unit. Definitely adds some intrigue to the, uh, the, the game itself. Ooh, and does not i don't think he managed to warp that out wow okay so definitely killing off that second adept there and he is going to be pushing out into the third base and he's actually got some links here into the uh natural as well very good uh eight workers killed by the protoss but the uh, zerg definitely catching up there we go eight uh probes killed 10 probes killed so drogo definitely earned his name the drone killer but now losing a lot of his own probes maybe he's the drone and probe killer getting these killed off but of course you know, there is a gold, so these units are going to be replenished very, very easily, both the probes and the lings, as well as the drones. And you see a little bit of combination coming out by Acer Bly. Definitely harassing this uh, probe line very well. 15 units killed. He's got double the workers killed almost of his opponent. And we've got a third base being secured now by Acer Bly around a very solid time, four minute. Uh, third base definitely gonna want to see that out of pit drogo But the question is will he be able to defend all of those locations at once again? That is one of the things that makes legacy of the void legacy of the void and what makes it such a great game in fact is that these expansions uh, being forced basically upon the opponent because of the mine out rate uh, forces a lot of more weaknesses into players defenses which means these small little skirmishes really become a big deal a lot of players at the lower levels think this is a little bit overwhelming but when you get to this level right here the tip top uh tiers of the foreigner scene it becomes really 
exciting to watch. Now we've got a Roach Warren coming up a little bit early. Uh, typically you will see the Hydras coming out before the Roaches in this matchup, but of course the Zerg has a influx of minerals and this has got a uh, higher mineral to gas ratio than of course Hydralisks. So that could be uh, what we're seeing here until the third base is secure with that fifth and sixth gas. Uh, that's most likely what we're seeing, of course. Uh, this will also be a little bit more sturdy against the Adept, but there's not that many Adepts on the field just yet, and still no third base out of Pit Drogo. I'm getting a little bit concerned. Now, Lings of Bly are going to get up into the uh, main here, and that's going to be a little bit of a weak spot here for, uh, for Pit Drogo, but the Adepts are cleaning house very, very quickly. Only one or two uh, dr or probes getting killed off there. Looks like a couple of these lings gonna survive long enough. Will they get a kill on that stalker? I don't think so, but very nice around there. And it looks like that uh, stalker trying to kill off an overlord, getting itself into another pickle. But the adepts there to clean up. Only two lings left. Looks like ooh, nice kill there. Love the corpse of that zergling. All right, so we've got the uh, Twilight Council. Now that was definitely being held off, so the zerg did not see that. Um, he built that when the wing was dead. He, that probe was out and about, and he had the resources to build that way earlier. So that could really only be one of two things, but I'm feeling the Dark Templars. I lean that way because he waited so long to place it. If it were some kind of timing, like um, Blink or Charge Lots or something, he would have gone ahead and thrown that down, I feel. Anyways, we've got a uh, possibility of a ghost in here. No, he's going to go ahead and cancel that. As he did see a huge amount of roaches heading to his own base, he did not want to go ahead and expire uh, that ghost and force that kind of uh, attack ahead of time. Now, we've got the Ravagers getting morphed in here. Now, Ravagers are very devastating if those shots ever actually hit that uh, corrosive bile. Uh, definitely something that the adepts are afraid of and some nice kiting backwards Ooh, a couple of those adepts taking a shot though he's got to be very careful Ooh, a couple more those are some rough shots and it looks like the roaches and ravagers are gonna keep pushing up this ramp and Pitrogo being forced uh, backwards into what should be his third base but has not yet been established and of course the pylons getting some good shots but going to be out of range at this point Mothership Core uh, coming in from the behind and trying to take a couple of shots uh, looks like he does kill off one of the Ravagers only two left now a couple of those shots still going down ooh nice evade there by the Protoss uh, some wings being built here for reinforcements and we do have that Dark Shrine about three quarters of the way done here will it be able to complete before this attack is over if he can get some Dark Templar into this battle he should be able to clean up the Roach Ravager very nicely it does not look like the Zer uh, yeah, actually, he has seen the Dark Trine. I don't know if he clicked on it yet. He has not actually started producing Overseers or Spore Crawlers, I believe. Oh, looks like there is one in the gold base, but that is not a reaction to the Dark Shrine. He is going to want to click on that the next time he is up on that ramp. Oh, he's actually just going to see that outright, and hopefully he will go ahead and throw up some kind of defenses because those Dark Templar are devastating in a drone line if you are caught unawares. But only Ling Roach being produced now, and there are the Dark Templar being. Oh, Spore Crawlers going up now. There we go. That is exactly what he was going to want. And the Roaches try and kill off as many probes as they can before they are completely killed off. He knows now that this attack is over. He does not have the Overseer or anything like that in position to be able to fend off either the Dark Templar or the rest of the Protoss army. And of course, uh, Drogo also going to be aware of that, going ahead taking his third base. But we've got a Roach Ling composition going here into the third. Looks like he's going to try and uh, overwhelm the Protoss a little bit before too many Dark Templar are on the field. And we've got Blink being researched in addition to the Dark Templar that are being produced. So he looks like this is not a complete all-in into the Dark Templar. He's going to transition out into a fairly typical Blink build after this, making use of that Twilight Council since he's got to have that in order to get the Dark Shrine. Looks like a Zerg close to mining out in his main here. He's going to be mainering over to his third and his fourth base very quickly. That's going to be a second gold base. But Archons are on the field now. That is one of the great things of uh, going the Dark Templar. You have a solid follow-up into the Archon build. And honestly, 
Ooh, we've actually got an Overlord drop going right on into the main of the Protoss. I don't know if he's going to be in position. He's not responding to that at all just yet. This uh, this is going to be a little bit rough. He's got a couple of uh, Zerg units in that third, uh, or well, that was actually his second base, but just no response, and he's going to attack while doing this drop. So the probe's being pulled off the line, and he's going to be a little bit out of position. Oh, all of those battles hitting. That is huge. He got exactly what he wanted in that attack, Bly, and uh, looks like he's going to be continuing to pull these probes off. Some great battles hitting. Wow. Really good play here by Bly. Double the uh, supply uh, of his opponent. This is looking very, very bad for Pit Drogo. Pit Drogo, of course, one of uh, the best players in the French scene right now. But Bly looks like he's going to go ahead and take this victory. This is this is uh, the the final death throes of Pit Drogo. I hate to count him out a little bit early, but um, the Roach Ravager army is real. But, you know, this is the age of Protoss, so we'll, who knows how he's going to do in the rest of this matchup. Of course, if you guys check the results, you will know how this ends up turning out. But right now, Bly definitely taking this victory. We'll see how much longer Drogo chooses to last. Loving the micro here by Bly. He's just um, getting, uh, basically using Bile and then just backing up and Drogo's being baited right into it. <laughs> but of course, Bly uh, messing up that last one. GG, well played. Drogo going ahead and admitting defeat. Great game. Really love the back and forth action. This is hands down a Zerg map. I love this map as a Zerg player myself. Uh, still, still. Some good maps out there these days, guys. If you play Zerg, that's really all I got to say. But right now, the Age of Protoss. We'll see how the rest of these uh, the, this series goes. But guys, I am Shaft of the Clanning Casting Crew. I thank you so much for joining us. Bye bye. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. It's been my pleasure to present this to you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. As always, I'm honored that you came to this channel and if you're staying for the credits, then clearly you enjoyed this content. If so, please be a super fan. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Subscribe to us on Twitter, twitter.com slash the only shaft. It's listed right here. And, you know, if you're a super, super, super fan, visit us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the only shaft. I couldn't ask for better fans than you guys. You're amazing. Remember that, and have a great day.